That is not what I was expecting. Welcome to the afternoon. Quick uh, housekeeping, if you're looking for the session on responsible media, that's downstairs. This, we're gonna talk about some publisher topics for the rest of the afternoon. I'm your MC, Rob Beeler. Uh, I've been uh, partnered here with Exchange Wire, thank you. Um, it's gonna get more and more difficult. Uh, partner with Exchange uh, Wire uh, for this particular event. Um, it's been something where I've actually been wanting to have this kind of relationship for some time. I really enjoy uh, the work that the, the team does. Uh, if you're not familiar with Beeler Tech, uh, we are a community of publishers. Uh, I get all the operations people together to talk really about talk shop and uh, try to solve some of the issues that we're trying to, we're all facing. So um, I will be your MC for the next number of sessions. And I'm really excited about this next speaker. The next speaker is Rob Beeler from Beeler Tech. I can't wait to hear what this guy has to say. So it is poll time. Uh, if you normally go into, uh, go into the app, go into the session, and you will see that there's a poll for this. And my question to all of you is, will we return to three martini lunches? I myself am not a one martini lunch guy. I, if I get one, I'm gonna have three. But will we get back to what was such a great part of being direct sold, right? You used to have relationships, you used to go out to lunch, talk through, you make a deal and so forth. Is that gonna make a comeback? So I'll give you a couple minutes to, to answer and think about that and then we'll come back to it. All right, so here I am talking about direct sold. No one talks about direct sold. In fact, I was, I was told once, like what is even new in direct sold? And so from that I actually decided to do a conference specifically on direct sold because for a lot of publishers it is the majority of their revenue. However, direct has to obviously come over with some things. But before I get to my presentation, I want to give you a warning. Almost all the images you see, I created using Midjourney. There will be many, many fingers. There will be faces out of place and so forth. That pretty much tells you where the world is with AI. Well, if Direct is going to make a comeback, if it's going to do something, it's got to compete against Programmatic. And Programmatic continues to grow. It's more efficient. It provides scale. And programmatic gives the buyers what they want. I put a little asterisk on there because I think that that's, that's to be debated. But the problem is, and I'll share this, that for Beeler Tech, I also wind up heading up ad ops for golf.com. So I am actually also a publisher. And I will tell you my strategy around the open marketplace and programmatic, which is to never serve the open marketplace or programmatic. I want to direct sell all of my inventory. I'll take a PMP, I'll take a PG deal or whatever. But the, me, the issue is that the open marketplace is kind of like quicksand. And again, I don't know if this is a ageism thing or whatever. I know as a kid, I grew up fearing quicksand probably more than anything else in the world. It turns out that it's not that big of a deal. But I kind of feel with the open marketplace, the biggest issue I have as a publisher is the market that tells me what I'm worth. I don't really have a lot of say. Sure, I can set floors, I can, do, I can play the games or whatever, but ultimately I'm getting told what my, the, my inventory is worth. And that's not a great business model, right, if you think about it. I've, I've always tried this analogy, I'll see if this, this works. It'd be like, like having a pizza shop where anyone could come in, grab a slice of pizza, and then pay you what they want for it. Right? And your job is just to create as many pizzas and slices of pizza as you want. And some will come in, they'll just take the pepperonis off one of them, they'll throw out the pizza, they'll just take the pepperonis, all that kind of stuff. You wouldn't last long, right, with that model. And I feel like there's an aspect that when it comes to just being open marketplace, we've set up this position again where, um, you know, my value of what I have is, is based on what someone else feels without really that ability to, to have that conversation, right? So, debatable, I'm sure, for some of you. But now we talk about getting rid of third-party cookies. And next thing you're really kind of thinking about this is what happens with this transition? Does direct make a comeback? Are publishers in strength? And so Rachel started this off by saying, you know, like uh, publishers, publishers are in a good spot. Um, I kind of, I, I actually agree, and yet 
if you are not a publisher and you're sitting next to a publisher, give that publisher a hug. I mean, I, I myself am not sitting there going like, this is the good times, okay? Right now is, and pretty much every publisher I'm talking to is thinking quarter by quarter. You know, when you start talking about the privacy sandbox, you start talking about all these things that we should all be doing, the bandwidth isn't there to do and start thinking that strategically, not for, not for many publishers. It is really, CPMs are down, I'm struggling, and they are really having to sit there and work um, at that level. And so this opportunity that publishers have with this kind of sea change within the industry really is gonna come down to is whether we could start to organize and start to actually be ready for these opportunities. So I'm gonna to get to the second poll, but before we do that, I do wanna see the results of the first poll if you wanna pull those up. We are gonna have martinis. Love it. I like that. And was that an actual thing? Yes, it was an actual thing. All right, cool, awesome. Um, all right, so let's get to the next poll real quick. So, if you, I, if you disagree uh, with me on this particular one, um, but yeah, let me, let me just set this up for one second, um, which is I can't see with everything going on right now that we, we don't have, we, we are going to have less signal coming going forward, right? Apple is gonna see to that within its environment. Everything that Google is doing is not going to replace the third party cookie. And the thing is that the third party cookie to me is like a, is like a diet of candy, right? It's just, it's so good. And you just want it and you just eat it and you know it's not healthy for all of us, but that's what we're going to do. The very last impression that has a third party cookie will be bought and sold right? And then the faucet will be turned off, right? And at that point, there will be less signal. There'll just be less informing the impressions. And while we will work through identifiers, we'll have Fledge, we'll have flo uh, <laughs> Flock. <laughs> Remember Flock? Um, maybe SDA. All of these particular, all these various solutions are all going to be like put together, but it's going to be fragmented. So is that actually an opportunity for publishers? And the options I gave you which I'll just go through real quickly is, yes, but, right? In other words, it's not a slam dunk. Well, yes, but no, which basically means I'm, for the purposes of this presentation, you're just gonna agree with me, it's just easier to just let it go, let me go on my little rant, than to say no, and then no. So can we go, so we're looking at yes, which I like, thank you. Can we go to the slides? Yeah, so let me just go through what the other options were. This is the correct answer, by the way, right? This is just you appeasing me just so I can just stop rattling on. No is just like, you know, Kendall Roy level, we're doomed, okay? And we really shouldn't feel that way with everything that's kind of going on. It is going to be yes, but. If you do not have a direct sell, uh, selling team, I don't know that you're gonna race out and start hiring an army of salespeople. I, don't, I think the, the days of having an army of salespeople as a solution is probably not what's going to, to get you to be successful. Uh, but uh, whether it is, to, to Karen's favorite thing, creating a network or working with others to help sell you, I think that there is going to be a necessity for you to start thinking through how to create that narrative around what you have, right? Um, just because there's less signal does not mean publishers are going to win. There's going to have to be work we're gonna need a better mousetrap. One of the ways I like to think about the industry as it is, is if we had put as much effort into direct sold as we put into programmatic, think of how efficient it would be, right? And I think that there's an aspect of this that we can start to think through what those elements are, learn from programmatic. And again, I'm not, this is not, when I say programmatic, I'm really more talking about open marketplace than I am uh, PG or PMP deals, right? Like again, if there's a relationship, I'm for it. If it's just blind, I, I, I question as to whether it's something I wanna really build my business around. So what is this better mousetrap? Well, I'll start with this first, and I, I kind of feel like um, the panel earlier uh, with Joe and Camilla and uh, Lindsay ran that I thought it kind of like stole some of my thunder here. Not that it, this is, 
This is actually quite the obvious point, but I don't think that everyone realizes just how much work this actually is. Audience first. Publishers should build, and the only way to future-proof your business is to base it off your relationship with your audience. Full stop. If you do that, the advertisers will come. Okay? And I feel like, sure, we're all kind of made for advertising. We all are kind of playing that role. And I just feel like there's an aspect that, like, if we truly, truly, like, buy this. And so many people say that they're user first, audience first, and whatever, and they're not. If your ad experience is your user experience, and if you don't like going to your own site, come on, right? Like, that's the lowest barrier that there is. Publishers have really got to create this because the fact of the matter is, um, and again, I thought the, the panel did a great job of articulating this earlier, just getting away with a cookie banner is just not going to be enough. You are going to have to, as publishers for the first time, really articulate the value proposition, and you're going to have to sit there and really talk to consumers and educate them. We've talked about it for decades, not really done it. It's time's up. Time is up. I want to serve you relevant ads. I want to serve you relevant ads. In exchange, you get the content. If that just doesn't come through in a consent or a, a cookie banner. It just isn't, it's just doing the minimal amount. And I think that it's just going to get tougher and tougher. And I feel like we have to practice. We have to learn how to do this. But I truly think that this is one of the, the key stepping points to that. And then when we get a consent, when we get consent, it is everything. And again, Joe hit the point earlier, like, if I get consent for, an ad, for a, you know, a user to see one of my ads, it is a privilege to work with me, okay? Do not assume I'm going to give you the consent to work with me. As a publisher, I really have to hold fast and go, I'm the one that's on the line. I'm gonna be the one that's privacy compliant. I'm not gonna betray the trust of my users. And so you have to follow suit. And this conversation has to start now. And it has to really be beaten into everyone that this is the way forward. I'll get the consent, you get to do your job, but you gotta do it in line with what my, what my relationship is with my users. Because you will lose me everything. And that's the part that I think is at the basis of everything that you can build. Once you've got that, what we really have to do is we have got to make it easier for buyers to buy. Um, I was really excited when I saw the sketch earlier and the talk about uh, um, automated guaranteed. I don't think that term is used often enough, and it should be. The fact of the matter is, is that if you've got any ability to, to go out and talk to the buying systems, whether it be the media oceans or others, you should be talking about getting your inventory into buying platforms, and you should be working on discoverability. So if you think about it, like I have golf.com, right? Any buyer can go and just buy golfers. It's not that hard, okay? But they want to be on golf-related sites. And there's someone going in there and going into a system, and I have no idea what they think of me, what they have. I have none of that stuff. And it is critical for our business to be successful, for me to work with every one of those buying systems to sit there and say, I not only want you to know everything that you need to know to make that decision and buy me first, but I also want to start to put my inventory in your buying platform. And if you haven't started to see this, MediaOcean will let you do it. Um, companies like Fat Tail, it's owner management system, are working with other partners like Horizon and whatever to actually get your publisher inventory into buying platforms um, and so forth. DSPs, of course, work this way as well, right? But there is this idea that you just need to be there in their system. Um, there's a company called Dan Ads, which is focused on self-serve. What's interesting, and I think they recognize this, is that it's really hard to get people to get another login. If I'm an agency, I really don't want another system to log into. But they're going to start connecting up those, those products into APIs. And I really kind of feel like there's this whole aspect that is 
somewhat programmatic, but not programmatic, right? It's automated guaranteed. And I think that that is one of the areas to really, really focus. Create internal efficiency. I think for the longest time, as someone who's managed people in ad operations, the, man, the style has always been, you hire someone into ad ops, you throw them to the sharks and let them see if they can swim or not, right? You know, you put, them, you, you know, you put their feet to the fire and you say, hey, can you handle this? Can you traffic? Can you do all these things? Can you get the reports out and whatever? Those days are done. At this point, your junior people need to start speaking a language you don't know. And that's talking about AI, it's talking about all of these systems, it's talking about statistics, it's talking about data, it's talking about math that you never had to. Ad ops, as it stands today, is just something where it just makes no sense to do the, 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 uh, the, um, just the repetitive work. Get rid of it, it's gotta go. Automate, outsource, Make that go away. Now, if you're in that position, you're going like, Rob's advocating for me to get let go, I am not. Good organizations are gonna understand that they need the talent to understand all of these next steps, right? It's just a matter of we, have, we are allocating resources to the least useful work. Pulling reports, screenshots, screenshots? Screenshots? 2023, we're still doing screenshots? Come on, like that shit just got to go away. And, and we have got to come up with ways to do that. And so I sit there and I look at that and go, if I'm running an ad ops department, I am sitting there looking at this as the moment to sit there and make this change. It is time. At the same time, I kind of feel like there's, there's some things that publishers need to learn and they need to offer more services. If you are an ad supported publisher, again, you're gonna go up and down with the tides and I'm sitting there thinking like an event business makes sense. I think one thing, and I, I mentioned self-serve earlier, and it's come to me in the, you know, in the discussions I've had around this, like publishers are not e-commerce companies. And there's so much to learn from e-commerce. And I honestly think that if you sat there and took the exercise as a publisher and started to actually sell product on your site and then tried to figure out how that works, it's a different language and a different skill set. And I think it's gonna be a really important skill set to learn. I think that's gonna be something that's gonna create integrations. You know, I, I had a conversation with uh, the CMO of Clorox a couple of years ago and everyone was pitching him impressions. He's like, I don't need impressions. I need someone to take and come up with a way for me to sell, to, you know, like, <laughs> like sell Clorox. Like help me do this, help me market, don't help me advertise, help me market. And so you started to see in the US, companies like Dot Dash working with paint companies to create custom paints for, that you could only make, get available in that brand and that website. That's taking a little far, right? But like, for example, with golf.com, we've built an e-commerce store. We are not gonna make millions off the e-commerce thing, but guess what? I have a unique data segment based on what I know people are shopping on on my site. So not only am I reaching golfers, I'm reaching golfers I know are shopping for clubs today, right? And so there's these aspects where you start to wrap up and think through your audience as a community and start thinking about ways to serve that community should open up other ideas for services. And last but not least, you have to develop a narrative. There's just this aspect that like, um, when I think about someone coming to us, so, so I'll, 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 this is a, a quick, quick version of this. So on a call with an agency, golf.com, and the buyer said to us, your site indexes really well with golfers. And you know how relieved we were to hear that we really do well with golfers. It turns out golfers go and read golf content and guess what, non-golfers don't. Thank God the system said that for us, right? And there's this, this aspect of like breaking through, right? Keep in mind that as I'm sitting here talking about all these things on the publisher side, agencies are trying to think about this too. The agencies are even more stuck and if you're in the room you can 
disagree, you could tell me I'm, I'm off on this, but if I'm an agency, I've been selling the way things work for a long time, and I'm about to change that, going with identifiers or whatever the solutions are, I have to change and somehow sell brands that is just as awesome. Agencies are in a really tough spot. Could be something that you as a publisher could decide to help with, or you could go right to the brand. I don't care, that's your choice. But there's some aspect of this that everyone's looking for that counsel, everyone's looking for that understanding. And I feel like if you as a publisher have a brand, you have got to create a narrative so that people are thinking about you. Again, obvious statement, but I kind of feel like we're losing that and just, we've lost that skill while we've just been focused on just programmatic and how much transactions and how many numbers we can go. Um, I think that this is also important for your users, right? If you're gonna gain trust, you gotta have a voice. They've gotta recognize that they're giving you, they're trusting you with it because they're gonna have bad experiences all over the place. Especially as some publishers start to uh, really struggle, you know, we all know the sites you go to and you suddenly feel the fan on your laptop kick in, right, because the video's loading and then the other ad unit comes up, and then you try to move your cursor, and whoop, there comes something up or whatever. Like, that's, you know, a doomed, doomed publisher, is a, it's a terrible experience. And we've got to sit there and figure out ways to sit there and cut above all of those companies. Ultimately, it comes down to this. Publishers create content, and I have yet to hear a study that says that people are going to consume less content. Has anyone seen that? Has anyone said that like the next generation is like dumb on the internet? They're what? Reading books or something? Haven't seen that one yet. Haven't seen that report yet, right? Creating content should be a thriving business. It should be something that really, really works. We're, we're, we're meeting a need and so forth. But what we haven't done very well is control our destiny. And I think some of that is because we come from a legacy business newspapers, broadcasts, and so forth, and we're not truly digital companies. The way I almost look at it is that publishers have missed a couple, couple like we're a couple revolutions behind, right? So in other words, programmatic comes around, well, first of all, the internet comes around, some publishers weren't ready for that, right? Still working on, on that. Then it comes down to programmatic, that changes everything, and now we're talking about AI. And I haven't even got ready for programmatic yet. Or I haven't even figured out how to operate. Publishers have got to sit there and start to reorganize and start to realize that, that we are content creators first and foremost. But we have got to sit there and start realizing that we are not organized. The fiefdoms that exist within a publisher. I work with a lot of technology companies. And the minute that I hear that they work across departments, I know their pain. Because editorial and business Many publishers, not all, are not aligned, nor is marketing. I always use this joke of the CEO saying, as of right now, we are a data-driven company, and everyone claps around the boardroom, huzzah, huzzah, huzzah. All departments will go in a different direction and look at our different KPIs. That's pretty much standard publishing you know, way of working, and that needs to change. That's the only way to sit there and start to control our destiny. This is both internal and external. So I'll leave you some, some thoughts. I'll make this deck available to you. Um, just in terms of this, again, they're pretty high level points. Let me see if there's anything that I missed in here. I think that's got it. The one thing that I'll just say is, I think that part of the strategy here is also to create unique audience segments, right? And the fact is that the first thing you're gonna say is unique audience segments don't equal scale. There's no doubt that as publishers, we're going to have to buy into context, probably determined by someone else, even though frankly a publisher knows their context um, better than anyone else. I think we have to get context back versus audience, so that might be giving a little bit of it away. But there is this part of going that our job is not to commoditize ourselves altogether. In other words, if I'm, again, golf.com, I want, 
I want to get some of the money that's all applied to golf, and I hope Golf Digest gets some, I hope PGA Tour gets some, and all the golf sites get some of it, but I want my piece, right? And I think that that comes down to creating unique data products. And I think the other key part to this is going to be interoperability, okay? And I feel like one of the things that I've heard that's a language change is publishers should not be selling data clean rooms. You should be selling data collaboration. And, the, and if you think about it, the reason I say that is because if you start talking about just clean rooms as clean rooms, you immediately get into match rates. You get in immediately all the reasons why that is really hard ground to, to row. You've got to really kind of be on your game on that. Use a data clean room, but start talking about data collaboration. And that opens up the idea of other things that we're going to be able to do. Look, it's really impossible at this point to know how this shakes out. And when I talk about less signal, right, you obviously hear the agencies and a lot of companies talking about identifiers. Let's do hashed emails and so forth. And I think that that's a positioning that makes sense because it's better than a cookie, right? I would want that as an as a advertiser. I would want hashed email-based identifiers, deterministic IDs. That's going to be really hard to get to. They'll wait. They'll see how much they can get, and then they'll start to explore all the other, other options. We need to sit there and start figuring out what those other options are so we can start to, to work on that, that particular narrative. Um, let's see. And I think that that is pretty much it. Ultimately, um, so let's see. Um, so we already did the polls. So in my mind, again, this is something that... In my, that for publishers, the time is now. Uh, it takes time to stand up a data clean room or come up with data solutions. It just, it just takes time. It takes skills that you don't necessarily have. You're going to need to build this up. You're going to have to start to work on this narrative for both your buyers and your users. Um, you know, in the US, I can't name a publisher who I think does it well for their users, to be honest with you, because we don't have as, we have not had to deal with as much as you have here in this market. Um, I like the Guardian's language. I don't know if I'm offending anyone or anyone thinks differently, but I kind of feel like I'm reading that I'm giving consent versus just giving consent. And by the way, coming from the US to Europe to even use the internet, God, you gotta try, you gotta just gotta try it. <laughs> it's like, it's like not even the internet anymore. It's just like this painful game of clicking accept all a thousand times. We have got to move to the next level of this conversation so that people understand that. And with that, let us move on to the next panel. So thank you all for, for indulging me on that. <laughs>